In this video, I'm going to show you tips and tricks on how to be a pro in death ball. Let's begin. Tip number one is to, well, practice the game. That might be simple enough, but well, if you really grasp and think about it more, practicing the game matters a lot. Take someone like this character right here. It's David. He has not even one win. He just got his first kill. Now, imagine if you go against someone that has, well, 26 wins and 154 kills. It's slightly different, but it's going to matter. So the point of this, uh, you know, tip number one is play the game more. If you're playing for, you know, only an hour and then you play for 20 more hours, you're going to be increasing a whole lot more. It's just how it's just how we as humans work. We're naturally going to get better at something. Now you eventually plateau at a certain point and you have to keep practicing more and more and learn to adapt to new tricks and such. But generally, you'll learn a bulk of your growth just by practicing the game more. So if you think practicing the game just means nothing and you need some super secret top trick, practicing um, the game will make a huge difference. So let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is analyze the different characters. This is going to be really important because there is now like nine different characters you can pick from or eight. And each one has four unique abilities that can do things just like dragon rush where you go at incredible speed and you negate the ball hitting you so that's a free hit and it gives you mobility um you have koju who has chain spear and as the ball is like going towards someone else you can just throw a chain and pull it towards you so they have all these different abilities and you need to pick one if you want to be at your top level you want to be a pro you need to pick the one that you're going to be best at now if you're really good you can be pro at multiple of them you know i'm not saying you have to stick to one but if you want to be at your best, at your highest best, there's going to be one class, maybe two, that you're going to be like super top notch S plus tier with. So you need to analyze. Uh, let me show these characters. Um, so you need to pick, you know, look at these characters and see which one you like. If you're someone that's a little bit more simple and you don't want to do like big brain, like planning and this and that, like common key is a good thing. Like his dragon launch is good. His key eye blast just, you know, throw some speed at someone and death ball like it's a pretty simple character i think most people can really get along with this but maybe you're like you like fox row and he's a little bit more iq planning and you have tree jump and that can mess people's you know momentum and such or like fox armor maybe like more health or even shadow clone where you can just be pl planning things on the map to just really trick people up so each class has different, you know, abilities and such that can style towards if you're more passive or more aggressive. So you need to analyze each and one and see which one speaks to you more. Now, this third tip is don't be afraid to get a little aggro. So we'll spectate some people here. There's nothing wrong with like sitting in the corner the whole time. Um, you'll still learn, but I think to, in order to grow a little bit is to be a little aggro like that guy right there. Now, that dude just died. But... As the more you put yourself in, I want to say more dangerous situations, not every time, but a little frequently here and there, you're going to adapt more and more to being aggressive. And also when people are aggressive towards you, you'll be able to adapt to that as well and be naturally better at defending yourself. So it's kind of a, when you're being aggro, since this is a ball that's coming back at you, you can be offensively good and I'll help you de um, defensively as well. So I don't recommend just sitting in the corner the whole time. But I don't also recommend just being aggro 100% of the time because you're probably not going to win. You'll get more kills, but at the end of the day, you're not going to win. So this one kind of goes into point number two, but we're going to go a little bit more specific is learning the abilities of th these characters. Because it's not like Blade Ball where you have one ability and they can either be, you know, you just have one ability and that's it. You can, you know, force a ball, you can turn invisible, that's it. This game gives a lot more versatility in your abilities, so it really does matter. And just take the time to study these abilities and just really think, like, how can I use these different abilities in unique ways? Or just in, just in meta ways, you know, in really smart ways, powerful ways. And you do this, you just pick a character, just level them up, and, or you just, you know, if you have them all the way maxed out, and just practice and see, like, what can I do with, like, instant travel, and then maybe key eye blast and just think of different combos in different ways and that's going to work your your iq at this game and you'll naturally especially when you go against average players if you have a very smart brain at this game 
you're going to be able to trip people up really easily and it's just going to make your percentage of winning a lot higher and just yeah really look at these now the one character i don't recommend is jim toki in terms of combat um if you just want to get a bunch of gems then yeah he's the character but in terms of combat he's not really a combat focused character so yeah now this one is going to be really important this next tip and that is changing the position of the battle and changing momentum um like I talked about before, how each person has different styles. Maybe you're more defensive, passive, more, maybe you're more aggro. Me, I'm not as much aggro, but I like to trip people up. I like to use my abilities to change the pace of things. So if two people are going back and forth, I like to use my chain spear and pull the ball just so it can like disrupt them. Because they're in this moment where they're just like, they're just fighting one on one and I'm like, I'm going to change momentum. Or if a ball is coming at you and you both are hitting it towards each other. I'll just randomly hit the ball up in the air or I'll turn to the side and if someone's behind me that ball will just go towards them so I really like to change the um the momentum of the game and pacing and predictability so that's why it's good to uh you know to change positions in battle so if like this person's 1v1 right here so as we can see now if there's a person behind him he could theoretically turn in a 180 quick enough and the ball will go right towards the person behind him and if that person's not paying attention and they're gonna get smacked okay oh so and see just like how we just saw like right there he used his fourth ability from toji to change the momentum the guy that had the ball thought the ball was gonna go straight at the guy in the corner and this guy said no i'm gonna change the trajectory and someone like him could be not paying attention and it could trip him up that's why changing the position is just really key and not to keep things linear if you just keep hitting the ball straight and straight and straight yeah you might do damage on someone but like how he just did right there he just changed momentum it's not going to necessarily work every time but it can increase the chances of you tripping someone up them taking damage and you get to win and more gems and and becoming closer to a pro and then the last one this one's more of an abstract thing and it's kind of like wrapping a lot of things up together and it's the battle iq the battle iq is very important very important you can have a really good you know clicker and click the ball as fast as you can and the ball can go um you know you you'll, you won't get hit but if the person's smarter with their abilities than you and he can change mint you know momentum pacing and predictability on you it don't matter if you have a really good clicking skill like if you get outsmarted you're probably going to take damage see like right there that just that just really like that really backfired on that guy battle iq is just really important and you get that as you played the game so we're going to play a game right here and we're just going to try to um i'm going to change champions actually um okay so what you want to do is for like battle IQ, just always keep your eye on the ball and just think and just, I always like to keep a thing in my mind is this ball could come at me at any moment. Don't get into that, that mode where it's just like, oh, the ball won't come at me because once you get in that lax mode, there's a chance where that ball will come towards you and you're not going to be quick enough and you're going to take damage just like that. Just like that. See that guy was heading. I thought he was heading right for him and the ball came at me and I reacted. So it's just like, you never know what can happen. So you just always have to be on guard and okay and so just like this ability right here is slowing down and slowing down so you just have to be just very like on guard with this because people you know they have abilities too and sometimes you're not going to have sometimes you're not going to have all the four abilities oh see he wasn't paying attention he just took damage so now oh he took another damage and he's dead maybe he just doesn't know how to play the game but, okay, so the ball is coming towards me. So what I want to do is just like, you see, I can turn it like that. And now it, was, it wasn't very fast, so it won't really catch him off guard. But if the ball was really quick, you can catch someone really off guard. If someone's slowing it down. And now what you want, I'm going to try this right now. When the ball comes towards me, I'm going to try to use my instant travel and trip him up. See how he's getting really close? You need to use an ability to just force the ball differently or put some pressure on him. And let's see okay oh he just got killed okay 
So I'm going to wait for the ball to come towards me, and we're going to try to use a dragon or instant travel and trip someone up. But I also did you have to be careful because the instant travel can backfire if you don't react quick enough if they hit it. So, here we go. LP's dead. Okay, so we're just going to hit it. Okay, so he's he's an aggro person. So what I'm going to do, and then click Y. I'll change the movement of the ball. And then now he won't have that pacing on me. He won't put it on that aggro on me. I have a feeling it's going to be me and him in the finals. And so I don't have my other uh, abilities, but the only ones I really need is the first two because I can really trip him up with that. So we're going to... Okay, so there's three people left. So we're going to try to go straight here. Okay, so he's changing it up. So he wants to change momentum up. And then what I'll do... Oh, he just took damage. Okay, and then I'll insta-travel insta him. And then... Okay, oh, get ready. One, see if you hit one can just negate that and he just took another damage and he actually died I was not suspecting him to die okay so now what I want to do is you want to create space because your abilities as my bottom are well they're cooldowning so what you want to do is create space until you get your abilities back and then what I'm going to do is make him have to hit the ball again instant travel and then put pressure there we go like I said, I'm not a full-on, I'm not a big aggro person, but I have enough um, practice to where I can put myself in positions for a little bit of time in aggro, but then I want to separate and then slow down the pacing. Um, that's for my style, but some people like to just go full-on aggro, and that's your style, you know, that can work out. It's more of a double-edged sword. But yeah, I just want to show you guys that. And let me know what you guys thought. So let's go over again. Play the game more. You know, practice more. That'll be like your biggest overall growth. But once you crack up into the, like the top percentile, you really got to learn the nuances and like really just get your battle IQ in tuned and to be able to like really get to the top of the top of the top. Um, number two is analyze the different characters. Look at all the different characters. See which one plays into your uh, style of gameplay. Uh, number three is don't be afraid to get little aggro. It's good to practice a little bit of aggro just in case if someone starts to get aggro with you, you can be, you can you know, match their level of aggression and defend yourself and you won't die as easily. Um, number four is learn the abilities. Just learn the, the abilities, see what can be combo, see how you just think in the battlefield, how I could use this ability in this moment and this and that. So really just learn the nuances of that. Uh, the next one is change the positions of the ball. That one's really key. Don't stay linear and just keep going in a one-on-one -on -one fight. See how they're fighting right there? And then someone just hit it. They just change the position of it. And that can really just mess people up. And then battle IQ. Play the game more. Play the game more. Learn the, you know, learn the thing. Learn how you can outsmart people. And don't always rely on you just clicking a ball and it coming towards you. Learn everything you can, especially with these abilities. And just really try to outsmart your opponent to increase your chances of winning. So if you guys like this video, please still like, subscribe. I'll be coming out with more just, I do Roblox uh, content in general. If you want me to do more Death Ball, you know, hit that like and subscribe and I appreciate you all.